Hey y'all, excuse my mess, uh, it's time to stand, put your hand over your heart, and sing along. Play ball. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Texas Clay Festival 2020. And this morning, welcome to what we call Clay Church here at Texas Clay Festival. We've been putting on Clay Church for about uh, 25, 26 years. And uh, usually we're right here in uh, Demo Tent D. And out in front of the tent, we have a bunch of tables set up, and everybody brings some good breakfast food, kolaches, stuff like that. And uh, we have Bloody Marys and coffee and uh, have a good breakfast, and then we meet together in the tent and have a little service, which we call Clay, Clay Church. And in that service, we just uh, say, if anybody has any words of wisdom, they impart it to the community. And uh, we pat each other on the back and give each other trophies and just uh, wish each other the best uh, uh, of everything and uh, just embrace our clay community every that Sunday morning and hope for a good day on Sunday, good sales day. So I'm here today in virtual uh, tent D with my brother uh, Max Butler over here. Thank you, Max, for that uh, rendition of... Uh, National Anthem. Got my other brother Carl Block over here. Carl's going to be talking to you in a little while after I get through blathering. And back in the back here we got a bunch of musicians. We got uh, Don Gallo on uh, harmonica. We got Gary Hatcher, Ty Johnson, Frank Campbell on guitar. And who's that? Oh, way back in the back we got Randy Broadnax. Hey Randy, what up? That Randy Broadnax, he came, gave me a hug a while ago, gave me a pat on the back. He hardly ever gives me a pat on the back, but I sure, I appreciated it. So I just want to give a shout out to uh, the other founders of uh, Clay Festival, Dean and Terry Buck, Jan and John Brigger, Mike and Gay Lynn Hodson, and uh, recently uh, Kyle and Angie White have joined us in running this outfit. And this year, big shout out to Tasha Corradini and Austin Buck for doing all the, putting in all the hours and doing all the work they had to do to put this thing together virtually. Thank you guys. Good job. Good job. Uh, on a sad note today, I uh, just have to report uh, that our, our good friend and wonderful potter Doug Brown passed away recently. Uh, Doug is uh, one of the founders of the Edom 
uh, crafts community up there, and he and Beth uh, have been making great pots and eat them for a long time. My condolences to Beth. And uh, if you were lucky enough to know Doug Brown, you know he was a really nice guy. Uh, incredible wealth of knowledge uh, concerning clay and incredibly generous with that knowledge. If you had any kind of question about any, any, any aspect of the clay process, uh, Doug would probably know the answer. And he was also just really generous uh, in supporting the, the Texas clay community. So we're going to miss him. He was a wonderful guy. Uh, we're going to miss those pink overalls that he always wore for sure. Rest in peace, Doug. Well, as most of you know, I hope probably all of you know that we're in the midst of a pandemic here, COVID-19. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of a tedious thing that we're dealing with, but uh, we're learning how to deal with it. And, and I've learned uh, how to appreciate uh, things that I formerly took for granted. And I didn't even know I was taking them for granted. Uh, things like uh, handshakes hugs, uh, a normal kind of passing of time, marking time, toilet paper, you know, things like that. And one of the things I found that I have taken for granted is community. We here at Eye of the Dog are fortunate. We have a lot of potters and a lot of artists that uh, live around us here and we get to see them on a fairly regular basis, uh, but not nearly as often as we used to. So I'm proud to have this community, but I'm also proud to be a part of this clay community that I'm talking to right now. Um, we are a very strong group and uh, we give each other support. It's a great community. I'm proud to be a part of it. You know, it's, it's special. It's a special community. And I was thinking about what makes this community special. So I did a little uh, research, uh, kind of thinking about clay, research as in Googling something. And I found something out that I didn't know before, uh, and that's this. The Associated Press back in 2012 uh, reported that they have found evidence in caves in South China that people were making pottery 20,000 years ago. 20,000 years ago. Can you believe that? That's a long time. So people have been making pots like us, been working with clay like us for 20,000 years through all kinds of things. Depression, war, famine, plastics. We even made it through plastics. We're still doing it. We're making pots. So. Well, that's one of the things that makes this community special is the longevity, the length of time that our people have been doing what we're doing today. We're very special people. I mean, how many people can take mud out of the ground, shape it, put it into the fire, turn it into stone? You know, not that many. There's not that many. And we're a part of that DNA. That's a part of us. We're some of those people who need to do that, who need to work with clay, and that's our life. So I'm proud to be a part of that. It's just uh, 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 one of those things where I just have to say we have superpowers, you know, the ability to make mud into stone, superpowers. So what that leads me to is because of that, because of the people we are, risk takers, problem solvers, creative problem solvers, because of the people we are, we are very well equipped to tackle COVID-19 and this pandemic. Like right now for me at present, uh, I'm kind of uh, adrift a little bit, you know, in terms of trying to plot out the future, see where I'm gonna go, what's gonna go on next. Like uh, eight or nine months ago, you know, we all probably woke up every morning and thought, okay, I'm going to do this today, I'm going to do that tomorrow, and then next year I'm probably going to be doing that, you know, with some certainty. We did that with certainty and really not realizing that nothing's ever been certain, you know. 
you might have the best laid plans, but all of a sudden you hit a curveball comes in and you miss it. You know, that happens all the time. You know that, especially working with clay. Just when you think you know what you're doing, your kiln breaks or something. You know. Well, that's what COVID-19 is. It's a big old curveball, and we're very well equipped to deal with it. So I'm proud to have all of y'all uh, in this clay community. Uh, we're sharing this together. We're all in it together. We support each other. We love each other. And uh, I'm proud to be a part of that community. Things are going to change, you know. Uh, we're at a great time here in history to, to create a new reality, to create new realities. Some of the ways we used to work and sell our pots and make a living, some of those things will uh, carry on. Uh, there'll still be some good art shows, but we'll have to uh, adjust as we already are. We're going to have to learn how to maybe work online or have pop small pop-up shows in our yard. I don't know. I don't know what, what direction we're going right now. But I truly feel like that when we come out of this, as we come out of this, the public is going to need our work more than they've ever needed it before. They're going to recognize it for its worth and for its wonderful soul energy that goes into everything we make. And they're going to need to learn how to do that themselves. We're going to have people that need to say, uh, I, I want to learn how to work with clay. I want to be creative. I want to leave a mark. All right, so I think that's what's going to happen. And we can do it, you know, we can do it. All right, I think that's all my words of wisdom for whatever they're worth. Uh, I'm going to leave you with our kind of traditional, our traditional uh, wind-up song of a clay church. And uh, everybody be sure and sing along. It's called This Little Light of Mine. It's real easy. This little light of mine. Texas Clay Festival 2020. Billy, hold on. I forgot I had this mask on. Billy Ray asked me to share my wisdom with you for the virtual Texas Clay Festival. So here I am, and I'm going to share both of my wisdoms with you. These are two wisdoms I have learned during the pandemic. The first wisdom is from my brother, Jim Bob Salazar. Now, Jim Bob told me, he said, Carl, this pandemic, it's got a silver lining around it. He said, when would we have stopped working? I mean, I work all the time. I'm always making pots. I'm always driving pots. I'm always packing pots. I'm always taking pots here. I'm always packing pots up. 
it's just work, work, work. And it's a beautiful work, and I do miss working that hard, but it has been nice to stop, to get to look a little harder at my work, to get to pay attention a little bit more to what's going on. And I won't lie, it's been nice to do other things that work interferes with the important things, the beautiful things, like going fishing, like getting on the river and paddling the kayak, like riding my bicycle, like enjoying more time on the porch, like eating a longer lunch, like taking naps. I'm into naps. All of those beautiful things that are so, so, so nice and make life more pleasurable. I got to the point that I wasn't making enough time for those things. And you know what? I may never work hard again. This might be one more thing that I quit. I may just quit working hard. And I can thank the pandemic for that. There's your silver line. The next piece of wisdom that I've learned during the pandemic was on a radio interview with the fine man that makes all the delicious fried Twinkies and the fried Hershey bars and all that stuff for the state of Texas that should never be made for human consumption or maybe even animal consumption. This man said that the state of Texas was 90% of his income for the year. And when the interviewer said, are you worried about it? He said, no, not really. He said, at first I was, but then I got to thinking about it. And he said that, you know, this was not gonna be a year to get ahead. It was not gonna be a year to buy a new car. It was not going to be a year to go to Hawaii. This was the year that he just needed to be satisfied with what he had and enjoy family and friends, socially distanced, of course. So I took that to heart. You know, 90% of your income. Thank God I haven't lost 90% of my income. My galleries have been good to me. My, my world has been good to me. I mean, 90% of your income, that's nearly all of it. If you do the math, that's 10% less than everything. That's a lot. That's a whole, whole lot. Anyway, I took his wisdom. His teaching taught me that just be satisfied with what you have now, because that's the way it's gonna be. You can't get frustrated. You can't go crazy. You can't go start raving mad. You can't have a conniption, thank you, because you've got to settle in to who you are, what you got, where you are right now, which is its own kind of beauty. It's knowing thyself, which is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Not to drive yourself crazy being something or somebody you are not. So, thank you, Jim Bob Salazar, and I would shared that and I wanted to share it with the Clay Festival family that that's an important lesson. We got to stop. We got to push the reset. We got to find the silver line. I've made time for more people. I've made time texting more people. I've elbow bumped more people. I've been a lot better friend during the pandemic than I was before and it's been nice. And thanks to the fellow at the State Fair of Texas that makes all those delicious items that taught me this is the year to really pay attention to who you are and dig it. Don't try to be anything else. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it. Anyway, that's all the wisdom I know. I really don't have any more. And if you know me, you know that's the truth. I really don't have any more. So thank you, Billy Ray. Thank you, Max. Thank you, everybody who put this thing together. I miss you guys, I love y'all, I miss my tribe, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you uh, real soon, hopefully, hopefully in 2021. We'll kick it back up again and we'll get it going. It's going to get better. It's going to be nice. But in the meantime, don't work too hard. <laughs>